morning from Shalom Acres. We're here to talk about something that happened that could have been really bad on the homestead. So you can see in front of me, I got a lot of black charred uh, grass and uh, our yard and other things like that. And what happened is our ashes that we uh, we do, uh, you know, we take them out every day from a fire, uh, from our fire, because that's how we heat our house. And uh, what happened was, we normally let them sit in the bucket for a day, but my son doing the doing the thing, I mean, the right thing. He was he was going away for a day, so he wanted to take the opportunity to, uh, you know, just get rid of them, so something Dad wouldn't have to do. And uh, he ended up uh, throwing them out on the garden uh, because we put a little bit of ash out there, you know, it's just cheap potash, uh, but it gives us a little bit more nutrients for the soil. And he put them out in an area over here, which is where we had about uh, three inches of hay that we had cardboard down and three inches of hay. And you can see all of that uh, charred. And on the other side of the fence is actually a road and the actual fire, before it was found, got all the way to the road. And I'm, thank goodness it did not jump the road because it was a windy day when it happened. Because uh, it could have burned uh, down a hillside and several uh, hundred acres there that would have been uh, difficult to get to uh, because of the just the terrain as far as the hills and the, the cliffs and just the sheer number of trees. So uh, we didn't have to call the fire department. We were able to put it out ourselves. But just to let you know, in the case of an emergency, when, when things are happening and your uh, normal modes of putting stuff out that you have don't, uh, don't work. So I have a four-gallon backpack sprayer that, I, uh, that in the past when I've used controlled burns and other stuff like that, I just fill that up and you can use it. Well, in this particular case, I went to go grab it. It had been so cold here and I had a little bit of uh, soapy water in it because that's what we were putting on the cabbage and sure enough it was frozen solid so I couldn't couldn't use that so then it was just you know using hand tools to beat it out and leaf rakes to rake back the leaves and, the, and then ultimately pull out some of the grass but boy we uh, had a heck of a scare and if it wouldn't have been for I was actually just playing with my girls on the couch and one of my youngest, my youngest daughter goes, Daddy, what's that? And I, I looked out the window and I, I smiled. And I said, oh, that's just smoke, sweetie. I said, that's just smoke from, uh, from the chimney because we had a fire going. And uh, sure enough, I looked a little closer. and That wasn't from our chimney. That was just smoke rolling off the yard. And then I saw flames quickly and... It ended up uh, getting pretty scared, and uh, so that's what happens. So sometimes when you don't pay attention to your kids, you know, you kind of get what you get. I'm thankful that I, I pay attention to my kids, um, specifically in this instance, because otherwise it, I don't know what would have happened, because my neighbor's house was, uh, well, I burned into my neighbor's yard, burned part of the front yard, part of, part of their side yard, which uh, I know... They probably weren't real excited about it. I know I wouldn't be real excited about it. But thankful I have good neighbors. But uh, yeah, it burned through the whole, our whole perimeter fence here. And then also, like I said, it started burning in the neighbor's yard. And thankfully, they've got a couple small, smaller trees planted here and here. This one here is a little bigger. It didn't, I don't think it's going to impact them. But definitely, uh, definitely a scary thing on the homestead. And the other piece here, we had a mule. Uh, some of you probably saw a mule. Uh, out down on the homestead and mules I guess have manure when they poop they pretty much poop in one area well he had such a concentration of manure and all that lit it took uh, it took a long time to pull that out as far as uh, you know break it all down uh, to get that out and then the other part was the smoldering grass that we had and like I said earlier that was over three inches worth of hay and we had cardboard underneath it some of that was burrowing down underneath it 
and we came down here with the hose and spent an hour and a half just soaking you can see the holes that it just in here everywhere as far as because it started going down in there and it was uh it took a lot because there was a lot of, still there's still a lot more material here that could have burned and what i was worried about was because it was so windy that day if any of this came back up it could have blown back out and uh, potentially got across the across the road I'll just take a quick shot across the road just so you can see but I mean you can see I mean it's just lined with leaves all the way up to here which you know it burned to there and we were able to put it out and then if it would have blown across the road and down I mean that just drops straight down a hill and then there's a small cliff after that so if it would have got into that would have had no choice but to call the fire department because I don't think there's any way we could have uh, done that. And I myself am, uh, have participated in volunteer fire departments, so I'm pretty, pretty cautious about what we do and don't do. And also cognizant of taking away the volunteers' time, uh, especially in our area, because there's a lot of calls. And for me to have to call them uh, for something that, uh, that we did, if I had to, I would, but it's one of those pieces where I try not to if we think we can control it. So between Luke, uh, Stephanie, and myself, we were able to control it and felt good that Samantha was able to stay in the house with the girls. So feeling, uh, feeling blessed that nothing happened, everybody was safe, and also a great, uh, great lesson for my son around that. You probably heard the shofar in the background. That's uh, time for me to go in for breakfast. Hope you have a wonderful day. Shalom.